What I want to illustrate right now in the few minutes I have is how to use this space-time diagram to explain some of the paradoxes in special relativity. So let me actually ask you about a, a paradox that I think more people find easier to resolve. Let me describe it and see if uh, any of you have an answer. Um, so this is the description of a very well-known paradox called twin paradox. So imagine this hypothetical situation. Um, you have two twins, Alice and Bob. They are fraternal twins. So, um, um, so at um, I guess 18th birthday of Alice and Bob. Uh, who do you want to be the astronaut, Alice or Orba? Let's say Alice, okay. Um, Alice um, travels to, I don't know, Sirius, which I'm going to uh, pretend is 10 light years away. It's probably something close to 10 light years. Sirius, uh, 10 light years away. Um, uh, or uh, that travels to sets of sets of and and um, immediately after re reaching Sirius, I'm just gonna say S, reaching Sirius returns to Earth. Um, and let's say she's moving pretty fast. She's on a spaceship that's moving at, I don't know, 80% uh, uh, of speed of light. So this is the question. Uh, when Alice comes back, uh, who's older? So when Alice comes back, Is Bob older or is Alice older? Let me have you consider this question for maybe a minute and I will just pull the class uh, which one people thought um, should be the case. Because you know, when they come back and you compare their ages, one of the two is go probably going to be older. From what we know about time dilation, from what we know about time dilation, um, something about the passage of time will be different for somebody. And I want to figure out, you know, so who's older? Yeah. So give me, give you 30 more seconds, and then talk to your neighbor if you want to. You have 30 more seconds, and I'll just pull the whole class. So I find the majority of people get the answer intuitively correct. So, well, let's see. How many people say Bob is the twin that's going to be older? Okay, how many think Alice should be the twin that's going to be older? Okay, so um, the correct answer is yes, uh, Bob, Bob is actually older. Now, that's not a paradox, you know, that's kind of easy to, well, maybe not that, it, whatever. It, it, most people get that and um, it, it doesn't confuse a lot of people that Bob should be older. It's the explaining this part. Um, it's trying to explain the whole thing from Alice's perspective. So yeah, so from Bob's situation, you see that Bob sees that Alice's clock is running slower. So Bob sees Alice getting younger and younger as he ages, oh, sorry, so uh, let me calculate some numbers I'm going to need. So at traveling at this speed, traveling round the trip of 20 light years, the total time of duration is, uh, oh, wait, 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 um, I can divide by five to multiply, wait, no, that's not how it works, sorry. <laughs> 20 light years total divided by four fifths. So um, it's going to take the total of 25 years, right? 
Yes? Okay. Um, so as Bob ages from 18 to 43, uh, Bob sees Alice not getting as old as he is. So when Alice comes back, Bob, you know, 43-year-old Alice, I'm sorry, Bob, looks at Alice who's much younger, 30-something or something. Now, the paradox is this. How do you explain it from Alice's perspective? So Alice sitting in his spaceship, who's moving? Is Alice moving or is Bob moving? Bob is moving. So as Alice moves away, Alice is seeing Bob getting uh, younger than she is because she's aging normally from her own reference frame. But she looks back at Bob, who's moving backward from her, and she's saying, oh, my twin Bob is getting younger than I am. Is this situation any different on the return trip? Oh, so on the return trip, does Alice see Bob aging faster than she is? Look at the expression carefully. So this expression for time dilation, it involves gamma, right? Gamma only involves a square of velocity. So it doesn't really depend on the direction of speed. As Alice is moving away and moving back towards Bob, it's the same picture. So on the return trip also, Alice sees, sees Bob as aging uh, less than she is. So if this is going to be correct, at what point did Bob age faster than Alice did from Alice's perspective? So that's the paradox. And that, um, I mean, you can explain it in some intuitive level. I guess one way of presenting this paradox is that the situation is symmetrical. And when you draw it on space-time diagram, you will see that, oh wait, this doesn't have the twin paradox thing. Uh, let me just do it this way. Um, Space-time event, that's good enough. Yeah, let me get rid of this. Um, no, let me just have that. Um, no, I like the blue one better. <laughs> no, sorry. Keep going. Let's say, so Alice is moving at speed of, um, um, so 80 or 0.8 speed of light. So once you diagram what's going on on a space-time uh, space diagram, then it becomes easier to see because this is what you are seeing. Um, so so um, the, let's say that the unprimed coordinate is Bob's reference frame and the primed coordinate is Alice's reference frame. So this is Earth. Um, let's say Sirius is somewhere here. This is Sirius. So Alice reaches Sirius here. And then upon reaching Sirius, so Alice travels to this point here. And upon reaching that point, she comes back at the same point, uh, same speed. So something like, I don't know, so two and a half. So, uh, so she comes back to Earth at this point. So this is the trajectory of Earth, or you could say this is the trajectory of Bob, who stays on Earth. So once you draw this picture of the journey, Alice's journey and Bob's journey, then you can immediately see that it's not symmetric at all. Right? Um, I saw, you know, uh, for Bob, who stayed on Earth, um, you know, he remained in one inertial reference frame the whole time. For Alice, uh, she was in one inertial reference frame as she was moving away. And somehow, as she switches inertial reference frame, that's where these two are no longer symmetric. And you could uh, uh, more easily justify why you could. So in saying that Bob is older, you are essentially saying, that Bob's reference frame is the correct reference frame. Alice's reference frame is the wrong reference frame. Yes? That sounds OK to you? And um, so I think a, a lot of these people can figure out if you think about long enough, even without the space-time diagram. But what the space-time diagram is good for is explaining exactly how Alice's reference frame is wrong. 
And this is what this comes down to. It, uh, um, I said this on the first day, that most of the paradoxes with the special relativity comes down to misunderstanding about simultaneity. Yeah? So it's about the sense of right now. So as Alice is moving away from Bob, so um, let me throw the, uh, sorry, oh, mm. let me replot the axis. That's going to plot Alice's sense of right now. So sorry, it's going to be very cluttered. But you see these blue lines? Um, wait, you see these blue lines? Sorry, <laughs> you see um, these blue lines here? that's uh, uh, parallel to the x-axis, uh, or sorry, x prime axis, that's uh, what represents Alice's sense of right now. So when Alice is here, um, Alice's sense of right now is here. So when Alice looks at Bob, this is what, where, this is the, so this is, it's a lot easier to imagine, not sorry, uh, when Alice observes Bob. Um, so, e easiest way to, to explain this, imagine Alice has a magic telescope, which uh, can break the speed of light uh, barrier. It can just let you look at whatever things look like right now. And that's what you would have if you have the reconstructed observation. So, Alice has a magic telescope, which lets her look at where, what Bob is doing right now, and this is what Alice would see Bob doing right now as she's arriving at Sirius. Okay? And, um, and you know, you can see that you know, for her, the time of, oh, I can't really see, um, time of something like a year or, you know, unit and a half has passed. And for Bob, only unit of one has passed. So yes, Alice does see Bob as younger. And this is what you can show in the space-time diagram. Um, so you can't show it with this particular program. But so as uh, something was moving to your right, the axis uh, changed this way, right? If something's moving to your left, how do you think the axis changes? The other way, right? So the T prime, so you know, this is actually what represents the T prime axis as Alice is returning. And what looks like the uh, the x prime axis, it'll look, so let's see. Um, if uh, this is the, um, so this is the, if uh, this is the line representing speed of light travel, then the x prime axis would be this one. This is the x prime axis. So the, as she was arriving at Sirius, this was Bob right now. As she's leaving Sirius, this is Bob right now. So Bob time skips a bunch of years as Alice is turning around. And now this turning around, that would take some finite amount of time. So in reality, something can just uh, turn around on a dime, like, you know, that would require infinite acceleration. If she, unless, so she, her real trajectory might look something rounded like this, but during the time of acceleration, Bob skips this number of years. So th that period of acceleration is when Bob got older than Alice. But for the rest of the return trip, Bob is uh, still getting, not aging as fast as Alice is from Alice's perspective. 